Once Big Ten play starts, you got a slugfest on your hand. Going on the road to the Big Ten is as hard as anything in college basketball. The Big Ten is the best conference in America. We want to win the Big Ten all right. That's what we plan on doing. basketball. In 87, they won the, the Big Ten. In 88, they were able to win the Big Ten um, uh, again. Three guys, Todd Mitchell, Troy Lewis, Everett Stevens, that was their anchor in those four years. We just had a really solid team. We had very good coaches who knew where to put us in different places to have that type of success. Everett Stevens loose. He was a guy that averaged 12 points, averaged a handful of assists, but also affected the game with his ability to get steals and use his athleticism. He wasn't a big time scorer, kind of like his son Kendall can end up being. The difference is I couldn't shoot the ball like him. Everett was more of a combo lead guard that developed into a point guard. Kendall's more of a shooter that is going to develop into a good all around player. Really, since I was in third grade, he's been my coach. All throughout high school, he's been my assistant coach. My dad had a good balance of not overcoaching and still being a father figure. When I was in high school, I got recruited by DePaul, Illinois, Wisconsin, Michigan, and Purdue. We'd say, don't come here because your parents come here. Don't come here because you're a fan of Purdue. So many kids make a decision they think other people want them to do. You've got to make the decision that's best for you. When they offered him a scholarship, he said, would you mind if I, uh, if I went somewhere else? I said, of course, I, I wouldn't mind at all, Kendall. After going down there, he just felt like this is a nice school and I could fit in well here. I was thrilled, of course. Everett's the practical one, and you know, he was saying, you know, you're still a sophomore, are you sure? And I'm saying, great, that, that's it. <laughs> I had my jersey number 21 since I was in fourth grade. I always wanted to be like my dad. And you know, I'm excited to wear my dad's jersey. I was the head coach at Colorado State, and my assistant, Craig Smith, said, Coach, I got a guy that is going to be all league Mountain West. He is going to be a beast. We end up going down to Texas. When I first met Coach Miles, my first impression was energetic and always smiling. I mean, if you look at the guy, you never know, you'll never think he had a bad day in his life. Immediately, Turan is a special player. He's got acceleration, athleticism. He's got a motor that won't quit. Fran was going to take one visit before us, and it was Texas Tech and Pat Knight. And right before his visit up to us, he commits to Texas Tech. I decided to go there because there was a couple of guys that was coming out of my class in the state of Texas, like four or five guys, and we all committed at the same time. Unfortunately, Pat Knight got fired at Texas Tech, and Billy Gillespie came in. So as we're making the move from Colorado State to Nebraska, Turan got his release and Turan is sitting at our conference table and he's got a pen in his left hand and he goes, Coach, there's no thinking about it. Let's get this done. Let's go team. All the way up, all the way up, all the way up. Let's go team. Good, good. I don't know that I've ever coached a harder worker than Turan Petaway. Good close, boy. Good job. He has spent countless hours in the weight room, in the gym. Oh! My red shirt, yeah. I would go in there and I would just work out so hard, constantly, constantly, and I wasn't making any improvements. And I was asking Coach Wild when I'm doing all this work, and he was like, because I'm not giving my body time to recover. I said, Turan, you're out of the gym for three days. After the second day, I look at him and he just looks terrible, you know? And I'm like, what's going on? And we find out he's been going over to the rec center and playing for three hours a night at the rec center. And he went to a church and played in a church league for an hour and a half. And I'm like, stop it. I really had to cut back. After that, I took pride in working out with Coach Johnson, who's now at Minnesota. He really helped me out a lot, man. I mean, he took my game to another level. One thing we just tried to work on was just being consistent with his game. Pay attention to detail and do the little things and do them repeatedly and do them every day and make it a habit. 
first thing I noticed from day one was just his drive to be the best. He wasn't going to be denied the opportunity to be great. You just try to be the best you can with what you have. I just do what I can, and if there's stuff I can, I can't. If there's stuff I can, then I do. When Derek was first born, they came to us and said, Derek's one in a thousand. We think that he's an incomplete quadriplegic. Had his acervical spinal injury, C6, C7. At first, Derek wasn't able to breathe on his own. They didn't give us really a lot of optimism. Derek's life expectancy wasn't going to be past a couple years. Derek's been with the program since the day I got here. He would come in and, and sit along the baseline as, as a little kid. Thad met me and we started talking and he said, hey, anytime you want to come to practice, you're more than welcome to. Come on, come on. Growing up, I, of course, loved sports. Nice job, I played t-ball. Derek wanted to be part of a competitive environment. Found out that, yes, he could play t-ball, and whether it was coach pitch or whether it was hitting from a tee, Derek swung and hit it. Most of the time, we would get thrown out. Not in his world, it was still okay. I got into playing wheelchair basketball. There is a wheelchair league up in Columbus. When Dallas and Evan were here, they came to one of my basketball games up in here in Columbus. Dallas's mother has multiple sclerosis, and ever since Dallas was little, she had been in a wheelchair. I think Derek and Dallas had a, a unique relationship because Dallas was probably more understanding of what he was going through because he'd seen it with his own mother. They saw how much I enjoy sports, and they also knew that I was the manager for the Lancaster High School basketball team. Once I graduated, I decided I wanted to come up here. They said, hey, do you want to become a manager? And I said, sure. I just want to be like everybody else. Sports makes me feel competitive and just makes me feel like everybody else, even though I am in a wheelchair.